Well, good morning. I am in my living room and um, some time ago now, I did a video on uh, my rigs for commercials and I've been asked numerous occasions, when are you gonna do the one on your river rigs, which I promise. So uh, I've been doing quite a bit of river fishing lately. Um, really enjoying it, to be honest. It's not been easy. Um, the rivers are a bit low and clear and really lacking in rain and stuff at the moment and uh, a little bit peggy, but I've had some decent results. And um, I do like my river fishing and um, the prep and that that goes to it is completely different to what I do for my commercials, really. Um, so rigs and everything wise. So um, I'm just gonna have a look at my pole rigs for commercials. This is what it's all about today, these bad boys. So uh, these are the, some of the floats that I personally choose to use on rivers. So um, without further ado, I'll flip the camera and we'll have a look in my uh, box of tricks and see what we've got tied up. Um, no cat today, I had a cat in my last video, didn't I? But uh, my daughter's left her teddy bear there, so that's Bunny. So. Uh, um, Took us ages to think of that name, didn't it? So <laughs> uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five trays of rigs. I've tried to reduce it and I, I just struggle to do that. So um, you have to bite the bullet with river rigs and, and take a lot. I'm a big believer in families of floats and that, and you'll soon see like when I open the tray. So uh, I'll ignore the first tray to start with. I'll just go open the second tray. Now, if I had to choose one float, then this would be it. This is. Um, a, a desk Abbeville. I've had these floats for years um, and I've got them from 0.4 gram right up to 4 gram and in this tray I've got them from 0.8 you notice they've got shot on them um, and then I go to a gram and they've generally got an Olivet and then right up to 4 gram there and they've just got a big Olivet as well. Um, generally inline Olivets for this style of fishing I just don't want anything to ping off. Plenty of shot below the Olivet and then usually two or three droppers the uh, the shot below the olivet how it just helps it kick everything away from the olivet but then two or three droppers it could be anything from number 11s up to number eights depending on the size of the float and what you're catching so but anyway if i had to choose one sort of pole float this would be it there's loads of floats out here like this i'm using this pattern purely because i've had it forever and it, it just works it's that sort of shape it's a classic river shape a lot of people say it's rugby ball well i've never seen a rugby ball that shape it's actually a it's not even a pear shape is it but it, the, the bias is at the base anyway so but it's it's a almost round bodied it's just a lovely shape for river fishing it's got all the properties i want in a float which is basically that shape of body a nice visible plastic tip i really do like a solid plastic tip they glow up really well in the light and a wire stem when it comes to river fishing, a wire stem gives you loads of advantages because you're, you're fighting against the flow. So it obviously, obviously offer a keel, but it also means if you hold back, it, it won't ride up too much. But also, a lot of rivers at the moment, they get a lot of skim in the top couple of feet and the top layers move a lot faster than the bottom layers. So a wire stem helps combat that a little bit. So it's not ideal um, as far as getting wrap overs and that go. Um, I prefer a carbon stem for that, but for rivers, if I had to choose one float to do 90% of my fishing, it would be that shape, a nice bulbous float with a plastic tip and a, and a decent diameter wire stem, nothing too flimsy. Generally with wire stems, I, I'll put usually four, four rubbers on, sometimes three, because um, they're slightly longer, generally a river float, um, often four rubbers on. But that is my go-to float. If I'm stuck for anywhere, um, what what float to choose? That's what I that's what I'll use. And that, I will just show that again. I have a family of floats. I've got some smaller ones in in in, um, in the bottom tray, but in this tray I've gone from 0.8 right up to four gram. Generally a minimum of two of each, because obviously if you get a breakage, you'd want to be able to replace it straight away. Um, there's no you know if you're catching on a two gram rig and all of a sudden you lose that rig and um well you need another two gram rig in your box don't you but actually i usually carry three or four of each size everywhere i fish um corresponds to either the top three or the top four of my pole but very rarely i fish anywhere deeper than that top four and my pole and most poles these days it's about six meters so i tie them all if in doubt i'll tie them all to six meters but i know on the thames and the avon um i can normally get away with the top three of my pole which is about four and a half meters so I actually tie, usually tie a couple up at six meters and a couple up at uh, um, four and a half meters or the top three or the top four of my pole. And um, yeah, so that's that really. But, um, oh, before I go on, 
I, I suppose I better explain the type of river fishing I do. So I fish middle middle reaches of rivers. Um, I grew up fishing the Avon and the River Lem. Um, I fished the Saw quite a bit. Um, I've done really, really well on the north bank of the Neen. Um, and, and well, the Neen in general around Peterborough. I won the um, Winter League um, final there. 16 pound a roach so um so and i actually caught got i think like 11 kamazan points that year um with four pickups on the on the north bank of the big big matches and i are all with roach and stuff as well so that was good so 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 i fished those sorts of rivers middle middle reaches medium flow any any depths could, well, could be anything from three foot to 15 foot basically but um but the slow, sluggish sort of um, typical middle lengths of rivers, a bit of the Trent as well, maybe um, Thames or Avon. They're the sort of rivers I, I generally target. Um, so your real fast, pacey um, venues are a little bit different. Um, and also I'm not really fishing sort of 10 metres to hand for days or uh, I'm not fishing the River Wye and, and catching a, I don't know, 50, 60, 70, 80 pound of dace or massive roach or perch or whatever so so it's 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 sedate fishing really my river fishing so uh, i live in the midlands and uh oxfordshire warwickshire that sort of area is is is, is the area that i uh that i target so so those rivers and that's what these rigs equate to really i'm not fishing tidal rivers or i'm not fishing real spate rivers or anything like that so that's what i'm going so i, I suppose it's best to explain that before i move on but um still a lot of these rigs can be used on all sorts of rivers. So uh, anyway, let's have a look at our second tray. This is my top tray. Um, these are carbon stemmed and a slightly thinner plastic tip and slightly slimmer body. So they're, 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 um, they're a Dino float, so a Hungarian float, and I think they're called an Azuri. Um, I just saw them, I thought they look quite nice and they look quite good for, for the venues I fish. Um, I do like a carbon stem float. So if I can get away with a carbon stem float, then I will, because I just don't think you get so many tangles. And it's a bit slimmer. It's a good still water float, just an all round float for slow rivers and and still waters as well. So, uh, and again, I carry these, they're half a gram, uh, always shot, uh, up to a gram with Olivets. And I think these are, I think one, two, one and a half, two gram, I've got these up to, yeah, two, two grams. That pretty much covers a lot of still water work as well, but, but when the Thames isn't moving a lot they, and, uh, and the Avon, it, they're lovely little floats and um, they don't tangle so much, a little bit more sensitive. I can fish hemp on these as well. They're a nice float for fishing pink ears or bread in the winter and that. Um, the days when I don't have to have a wire stem and I want a little bit more sensitivity than, than these are the floats I use. A little bit further away from the Aberville that I use, so they're the two there next to each other. Slightly thinner in the bristle. Um, a slimmer, more sensitive body, and a carbon stem. So uh, again, I would, if in doubt, I'll go for this. Those this little tray of Azores um, work quite nicely for me so far. I've only been using them a season or two, and uh, yeah, they've been so far so good. These are my big boy floats, really. Um, these are Colm Extreme Passants, they're called. Bit of a mouthful. Again, I've only been using them about a year, maybe a little bit longer. Absolutely love these floats already. These are a much thicker wire stem for extra stability, a much thicker hollow or plastic tip. I'm not sure if they're hollow or plastic, but they're just nice and thick for big baits. And also, just, I don't know if you can see there, they're actually, there's a little hole there and there. So they're actually in line as well. So um, these are all tied on anything from 016 to 020 line. Um, and these are for ligging on with big baits, worms generally, might be maggots, couple of casters or something like that. But these are what I'll use for, I do a lot of, I've probably made quite a name for myself catching big fish on, on um, places like Evesham and that. I've caught tension. I won the Witch Haven with a barbel using um, this style of float. I've actually swapped to this, this specific float now, but um, it's this style of float that I like to use. A nice round bodied inline float with a thick bristle. The old floats I used was a Garbolino pattern. It had a carbon stem, and I've been dying to get a similar float with a wire stem because I just think you're holding back hard, and um, a wire stem is is better than a carbon stem for that respect. So, uh, but I've caught um, with this style of float, I'll use for catching bream, tench, barbel, eels, definitely eels, um, big perch, and oh, I had a little perch and all sorts. But generally, big baits, 
nice robust no nonsense float um, same shape of body again but it's in line so you're gonna catch fish with thick lines and they're gonna put a lot of pressure on the float so I, I just for this float in particular I want the line to go through the body rather than marking the body and potentially snapping me off so um, but yeah I'm really impressed with these floats I carry them right up to four gram uh, one gram to four gram we have a look at that tray again so you can see Oh no, not. I've flipped those ones the other way around because that means I've used them. I think I've mentioned that on a previous video. It just means I've used that rig before. And they're no nonsense floats, really. If I was bagging, you know, catching a big weight of silvers to hand, you know, a big 40 pound plus weight, or, or that, and then not, these sort of floats wouldn't go amiss for that either because they're just a real strong, um, really well made float. Um, the eye is nice, and on all the floats I've got, the eye is really nice and tight to the. Uh, tight to the bristle as well and i do like a standard eye a spring eye for silverfish has no place in my uh in my box well not in for carp fishing these days but um I, I think anything with a spring eye just isn't right the float doesn't work right doesn't sit right yeah a normal standard eye is far better than any spring eye patterns you see out there so um so yeah really good float really impressed with those i'll probably get some more of those i'll probably to be honest i tie most of them to 020 because they're for reels and things. And I, I could be using them in a gram size if it's just like four or five foot and slow water on the inside. But some places like at Evesham, it could be really tanking through on the inside and then I'll happily use three gram. And I'll happily overshot these floats quite a bit and hold them back. Because you don't, you don't want them shotted right and then hold back and then half the body sticks out. So you need to overshot it so you've, so you've got this much bristle sticking out. Now, you'll see a lot of articles in magazines just on the subject of shot in floats um and in an international rules match you're not allowed to overshot a float so um but in normal matches in england most people on a river and that you can overshot a float so if you can do don't make do and try and think you've got a fish nice and pretty and international style if you you will get more bites by overshotting a float and holding it back hard than trying to fish with an extra heavy float that's shotted right that can't be overshotted so um so if you can overshot a float do it because it just means you'll get a better bite and everything and less resistance um, is offered to the fish. So uh, I want sort of that much bristle showing. I don't want the body showing when I hold it back. And you can only do that by overshotting the float in strong currents. Um, really important that. And I think a lot of people just discount the fact that these fish feel, feel the resistance and then spit out worms and whatever, especially shy biting eels and perch and stuff on a battered river like like the avon where i often fish so uh, anyway brilliant float i've waffled on a bit too much about that um i will time in 016 and stuff as well if i'm just gonna be fishing for bream with like an 012 hook length on as well so um but i don't seem to draw those pegs so uh, <laughs> it's more 020 to a um 016 or something like that hook length and uh big 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 um bits of worm and stuff like that for it's an old work for, for creatures. So that's what I hopefully like to catch with these floats. The next tray, complete contrast to what you've just seen. These are lovely slim floats. Um, I've got some smaller Abbevilles there, 0 0.6 um, and 0.8 grams, um, just because they fit on the smaller winders um, from my first tray. A couple of John Francois I'll talk about in a minute, but these boys are possibly my favorite pole float. <laughs> for, for silver fish and everything i use them a hell of a lot and these ones i've actually butchered a little bit and i've just put on a wire stem for a bit more stability but when i still want a nice slim float more for still water so i use these at poor reservoir and place like that a hell of a lot uh especially on that short line and stuff but these ones for rivers are what i generally go for a nice carbon stem slim body and a slimish tip um all with shot all strung out usually Probably 10s and 11s, um, and my hemp rigs, 11s and number 12 droppers. And again, I tie these up on um, six meters or four and a half meters of line. Um, but a lot of these, because you're running it at them a lot, I'll, I'll often fish them on six meters of line as well to run it, especially with hemp and that. Sometimes you get a, you need to keep that pole tip well away and really run a, a rig down the down the peg. So almost like a stick float, but 10 times more refined, really. So if I just show those floats, it's actually an ultimate angling float. You can't get them anymore. It was the old Barnsley Blacks when Ultimate used to sponsor Barnsley Blacks. These they brought out about four different floats, and I just fell in love with these floats. They're absolutely brilliant. Can't get them anymore. If anyone's got any out there and they're willing to let me have them, then please, I'll gladly have them off you. I think they come in 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5 of a gram. They're the three sizes I've got. But that's how it comes. 
it's a nice slim but strong carbon stem but it's nice and slim and just really rigid in that a decent body i love that shape of body similar to a colmic jolly that's the nearest commercially available one out there that's still available now but I, I i just like these floats and and it's actually a hollow tip there but what i do i don't know if you can see there let me just straighten up whilst i'm holding the camera i actually chop the bristle down a little bit and i actually chop the stem down a little bit you can just see you just chop it down a fraction so it's actually a, a shorter float but also it is a hollow tip but i chop the end off and I actually plug that with an old broom bristle so it becomes a solid plastic tip and it's slightly stronger and everything as well. It's a bit flimsy, that hollow tip. But by just plugging it with a broom bristle, I've got a nice solid tip float, the right length, right? I just absolutely love this float for all manner of things. It just screams roach, that shape to me, especially with hemp and bread and anything fishing through the water, with casters and things. and. Uh, absolutely lovely float i carry them in like 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 but a 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 are the two sides i use the most but i have no more left now so uh, the ones you see there are pretty and these ones in my hand are the only ones i've got so if anyone has got these floats get in touch please and i'll uh i'll, I'll gladly have them off you if you don't want to use them it's a lovely float beautiful for roach and it's caught me a hell of a lot of fish all right back in this tray there are two floats i've tied up and that's these two. They're Jean Francois, and they're in a 0.4 gram of a, of a well, 0.4 of a gram. They're exactly the same shape as the Abbevilles that I like, but what they've got is a slightly thinner and more sensitive fibre bristle and a slightly thinner wire stem. Now, I've only done them in 0.4 gram in this box, but if I was doing any amount of bloodworm fishing, then I'd probably have a few more of these tied up for bloodworm fishing on the river, especially on a river that's been hammered a bit like. Evesham, which I keep coming back to, but it's a really hammered river. So, um, that be, just because it's slightly more sensitive and you definitely get better bites, a slightly thinner fibre bristle than, a, than the plastic bristles that I use. But in the main, I'm more than happy to use what I've got set up in this box. But if I was really going bloodworm fishing on the rivers a lot more, then maybe I'd have uh, a tray of these set up as well. At the moment, I've just got some 0.4 grams set up um purely because when you sometimes you want a really light float but you still need maximum stability and you need that float to be upright and the upper layers of a river often move much faster than the lower layers so a wire stem especially with a bait like bloodworm when you're still fishing pretty far down in the water um as opposed to hemp or maggots or something that you might be fishing through the water um and that's when that comes in really handy so i've just got a couple of 0.4 grams set up there just a little go-to float on hard days when I really want to trick um, some wary roach. So yeah, so that's the only float. I've only got a couple set up in this box, but Jean-Francois, classic cult float for a lot of people. A little bit too sensitive for me for general river fishing, but bloodworm fishing, sometimes maybe bread fishing or something, then it could be useful if, if you're into that kind of thing. Right then, my bottom tray's got a real mixture of rigs in, but these ones are what I'll show first. They are what we commonly refer to as pencil floats. They're generally in a gram to three gram. And the ones I prefer, Preston Magic Series 5s and Sensors Guillaumes or Guillaumes or something like that. They're, these have come in several different paint jobs and they keep changing the paint job for some reason at Sensors. I don't know why. But I've had more different sorts of colours. So, uh, But these are, these are lovely floats. Very, very slim. They're great for absolutely bagging up with a heavy olivet, bomb the rig straight down, no messing, no holding back. The bite and the strike up with a float like this compared to a body float is so, so much more effortless. And it's just great for speed fishing for small fish. It offers no resistance on the bite or no resistance on the strike either. And, and I've won some money. I won a match at Evesham with £10 of roach using these, I think in a gram or gram and a half. Well, both I had so gram and gram and a half size. And you just ran it at them, ran it at them. The bites were brilliant. And I've, I'm convinced that this shape of float um, helped me hit more bites. But the downside of this float, if there's any sort of skim, if you need to hold back the float at all, or if it's going through too fast, it's a waste of time. I have actually, and I know it's won me matches this float, but also I think it's cost me in the, in the past as well by trying to make this float work on days when it's not um, the right shape. 
Um, so if in doubt, just go with a standard body float. But on its day, North Bank of the Neen, we used to use these as well with bloodworm in two and three gram sizes. Bosh it straight down, and we have really deep, six meter deep, and no flow. So you're almost like fishing a still water, and, uh, and you just wash, you know, straight up, brilliant. You didn't seem to bump so many fish off as you do with a round bodied float. Great on a whip as well. I fish the Thames a lot, and on certain days when there's no wind and that, you have to fish gram and a half, two gram rigs and absolutely bomb it down just to get through the bleak but you're still fishing for roach underneath and um, this sort of float really can work well um, when you've got hordes of minnows and bleak and tiny things that you've got to bomb the rig through i've used this with a lot of success on the thames usually with a, an olivet and one or two number eight droppers it's a great float for positive fishing but still you get a real nice effortless clean strike but no good if you need to hold it float back I generally use gram and a half and two gram, um, sometimes a gram, but generally gram and a half and two gram. They, they seem to do the business. We'll quickly move on to these then. These are for close in perch fishing. They are Malman Speedies, after Nick Speed, my mate Nick. And they've got, I'll just get them here, quite a thick plastic bristle, a roundish body and a titanium wire stem. They're just nice for fishing worms and maggots um, close in, you know, just past your, just down the edge or just past your keep net or whatever. In smaller sizes where there's not a lot of flow, um, I just find they're a nice, no nonsense sort of float and I'll happily use these on still waters as well. But I tend to tie them up to about four meters of line and but I could chop them right down because you might be fishing in three or four foot of water, but sometimes you've got a bit of depth close in as well, but no flow. So I do like strung out rigs for perch if, if the tow allows me to fish strung out because perch definitely watch watch the bait fall on a clear river but um so yeah they're they're a nice float when there's not a lot of flow and not a lot of depth close in for perch and stuff oh and uh yeah i've just made a few floats just further up uh, just an old float i've butchered an old maver polar i think they are but i put a much thicker tip in just for shallower pegs they're all on O18 18 line, if you can see O18 18 there. Um, well, I'll put a big worm on them, just for shallower pegs. A bit like my Colm Extreme Passant, but, but for shallower pegs with big baits, basically. So I've just got those as well. Um, to be honest, I've not had a chance to use them at all this season, but they're there just if I need them. And I've also got a couple of pole sticks there for turbulent shallow pegs, if I want to just run it through. You know, if it's like three foot and really streamy and a bit boily, then I might use them like a pole stick, basically. Um, again, they're just there as a reserve. I've not, I've not drawn a peg anything remotely um, close to needing those. So, um, so yeah, um, I'll come back to that those middle blue winders in a sec. All right, then my top tray also contains some rigs I've just popped in the lid. I've got a winder tray in there, and I just put some um, some pole arse just to keep the winders in and stop them falling out. Um, I haven't got any of these loose to show you, so I've just took a couple out. A census desk float again if i just show you these a bit closer up um very similar to the pencil floats i've got but i just I initially just bought them sorry in this sort of size i was after a nice float for i quite like this shape of float for bleak fishing it's got a little bit of a shoulder it's nice and slim but a little bit of a shoulder when you're just fishing a, a bulk and these just have a bulk of number 10s I don't know, I just like this shape of float for if I have to fish for bleak, I'm, I've notoriously got a represent, I hate fishing for bleak, I'm not, they're my least favourite river species. At times when I have to, these are the floats I'll use. So uh, I initially got them in these small size, 0.2 and 0.3 for fishing on short lining for bleak and, and on whips, like three, four metre whips. But I've also got them like right up now, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.1 gram, and right up to a gram and a half, so I can fish they're just a nice float for fishing on a whip, I think. So um, I've not used them a great deal. Um, so the jury's still out if they are right or wrong, but I just think they look beautiful for whip fishing. Now I don't do a lot of whip fishing um, because I think it's a pointless exercise whip fishing on the Avon, for instance, because there's too many bonus perch and stuff around and the, the, the roach aren't numerous enough. But on the Thames, it's a whole different ball game. There's a lot of fish load of roach to be had sometimes and also bleak and little dice and things and then um, speed fishing with whips really comes to, into play on the thames much more so than on the avon so i've got these really as a thames whip float more than anything nestled in the middle of my bottom tray are my last rigs with no floats on at all and some people will cringe when they see these um a lot of river purists might cringe when they see these but they work for me 
and I'm quite happy with them. And these are flat float rigs, but there are no flat floats on there. That's because they are, I keep all my flat floats separate in a long tub like that. Let's just see if I open up one handed, just about. Flip that round. Now I do use this pattern, the sense of stash a little bit, which is this red pattern. Um, nice pattern and everything, but generally I've got some Peluso bubbles as well. Um, some of them have got bristles in, some of them I just pop the bristle in. They're good for edging through. But actually, to be honest, I've had to just use one float for flat float fishing. Uh, I've been using them for years and years and years. Is the old faithful Coluso torpedo. Um, generally use a flat throat from three gram right up to eight gram really. Anything past that, generally I can find you can catch better on a pole feeder or a normal feeder. Um, international rules are a bit different and obviously you have to make do with, with flat floats and use much bigger floats but um, in UK matches um, a pole feeder is better than a, a flat float when it's absolutely tramming through I find and anyway there are probably better floats than this out I know a lot of people use there's a one called a shark a Caluso shark that's out now slightly improved version I gather and, and also there's um, a Caluso ray which is a more traditional disc shaped flat float but I've had these forever. They're expensive floats and I just find they work. I'm only ligging on with big baits for big fish generally with these. I don't do a lot of sensitive laying on um, with small baits. Um, normally on the rivers I fish, I can hold back hard on a, with a three gram bodied float. So I try and get away with a bodied float for a lot of my holding back, um, three and four gram. And then past that, when there's a float that's a lot more severe, I'll move to a flat float, generally in three, four, five gram. Um, sometimes as much as eight um, but generally on the rivers I fish you don't generally have to go much more than those sort of sizes although I have got them inside I've got 10 grams there and, and all sorts so um, so yeah but I keep my flat float separate because they're big cumbersome things I can't see a point in putting they, they, they attach with pegs anyway there's no eyes so if you just see there they attach by that peg there and then on the stem so there's no there's no need to keep them on on the winder um, and they're a horrible float to try and store on a big bulky winder so keep the float separate and then I just put them on a winder and I've also got um, a, little, a little tub of olivets there pinned olivets that I'll use um, or in the bigger sizes well I'll show you my system for it is a bit cringe worthy that's that's the thing um, not everyone will be impressed by how I store my flat float rigs or how I shot them but it's worked a treat for me so I'll just get some out and I'll show you these are my flat float rigs um, no medicine around 022 line or 020 generally I'll generally tie them that's that four means it's equates to a top four of my pole I'll chop them down to suit on the day um, up to recently I've been shot them really really crudely and I use non-toxic um, AAs and even swan shots um, on the line I actually put a tiny bit of fine silicon on the line and pinch them on um, that means I can have just one or two rigs but I can really swap um, the problem with flat float fishing you're never quite sure until you actually pull it in the river whether you've got the right size of float and you can be constantly taking floats on and off and shot on and off to get them right so I will happily keep pinching and, and pinching off um, shot with pliers and I've got silicon on the line to protect the line. I don't know if you can just see that one there. there. So that actually hasn't got a shot on there. So I've got three, they're probably um, AAs or something, rather than an Olivet. Um, and that works really well for me on the really big, horrible floats. Um, and we're fishing for big fish. I, it looks horrible and clumsy. But it does work and um, it's good for overshotting floats and everything. And generally I have a big bulk like that and then some eights down the line. And generally, hopefully this one's got one on. Uh, where's my swivel? Can't see it on that one. But there should be. You can see it on this one. There, I actually use a quick change swivel there as well. So I can quickly change my hook length as well. So that sleeve will pull up and I can actually put different hook lengths on as well very useful when you're eel fishing and stuff so you can quickly change hook lengths and sizes and everything where you can really mix and match but more recently especially for my lighter floats rather than this system i've changed and gone for pinned olivets and um so basically i've got um 
so two bits of silicon there from a pin dial of to go on. I've got a couple of bits of fine silicon there um, that I can overshot if I need to with extra shot. And then I've got three bits of silicon there for the stem of my float. And then I've actually got some hollow pole elastic for the top part of the float. I just find it's prone to ripping. So hollow pole elastic is actually better than silicon rubber. Actually, that's hollow elastic as well for holding my Olivet on. Very thin um, number eight hollow elastic. And that holds my Olivet on nice and securely. That's for two bits of silicon for um, overshotting floats. Three bits of silicon, one long and two short for the stem and one bit of hollow elastic for holding on the float. And it really does work. I'll probably do a video on this all on its own flat float fishing. I absolutely love flat float fishing for big, big ugly fish. If there's a bit more water on the, on the river one day, we'll go and just do some flat float fishing. I can show you this rig and how it works. But by keeping that and that separate, it's much, much neater in the box and very, very versatile as well. Because I've got a, if I just get them, very, very versatile as well. I've got a jar of pinned olivets I can swap between so uh, you can see the olivets there with pins on not a massive fan of pinned olivets but because I'm using hollow elastic actually I find it they will stay on the line quite nicely and really bite into the line and there's no chance of the hollow elastic ripping like silicon can so um, so yeah that's my last float really a uh, bit of a confusing one right to end with but um, works for me so a few little tips and tricks as far as olivets go, there's some tungsten olivets, three gram. That's a tungsten olivet, three gram. And these are, I think it says three there, yeah, number three there. Yeah, and that is what you commonly see out there, a three gram brass olivet. Look at the difference there. They're all three gram, but the brass one that's most commonly out there is much much bigger so if you can get a tungsten olivet use them they are much more superior it's harder for companies to machine them um, on their cncs which is why they don't do them they can't they they can't do tungsten um, as easy as they can do brass they're harder and harder to get i used to use the main for ones they were brilliant i've actually got some from overseas and um, the last that i had but sometimes you have to make do and use use brass it's not as good as tungsten because of the size differential there so uh, just a little chip there and there's my chart there that's um i've spent time in the car with a different length top kits i've got 130 mil 180 mil and 230 mil pole winders um just my tip section 10 winds of a 130 mil winder um will equate to the length of that obviously top two top two and a short three top three top four so um my little short whip rigs if i want to equate to a top four 44 turns on a on a little blue winder um my whip rigs are slightly different so i've just started to change i've got a five meter whip that i know takes 27 turns on a 180 mil winder so but for normal poles that's a real nice little reference i've done it with all my poles for several years now um just a nice little reference chart um that takes a lot of the guesswork out and obviously saves you a bit of line and just means when you get your winder out it's the perfect length as soon as you start and uh, let's have a look down here. That's the shot I use, that's Balabini stuff. Um, down to number 13's in my rig room, but generally um, for river fishing, um, eights and nines, tens, elevens and twelves are ample. Um, I only use number twelves for hemp rigs really, number elevens for fine roach rigs, um, and for positive rigs, eights or nines for droppers, for normal sort of roachy rigs, number tens for droppers. And if I'm fishing hemp, um, 12s and 10s, 12s and 11s sometimes. Number 13s are purely for fine tuning. Um, and I'll put those above the bulk just to get the bristles sitting right. So um, so yeah, that I'll use Balabini shot. Nice round shot. Not everyone gets on with it. It's really hard, but I put it on with style pincers, which I've shown before. I generally put all my shot on with that. Nice even pressure. I put them on my line and then I slide them up after I've made my rig and I, uh, I'll cut off the bit of line that I, I squeeze them onto, and uh, that saves any line damage. As far as uh, lines go, you can't go wrong with Paramicon. Awesome in the 08, especially for river um, hook lengths. Um, I'll use it in 018, 020 for main lines. Um, 
generally actually I've got 014 there, but I generally put them on um, 011 or 012 main lines, most of my rigs, generally about 012. My lighter rigs, possibly 010 for a little bit more finesse, but 012 seems to be a nice sort of um, catch-all um, uh, diameter and reasonably robust, but doesn't get caught in the wind too much. Uh, when I'm making a rig, my rig making board, I actually, I've got some elastic there and a couple of screws. So I'll pop my, pop my spool under there and I make my rig there. I actually, I've got a bucket there and I've forever and ever and ever, I've been using a little um, Preston Nutriboy, I think they're called. You can't get them no more, I don't think, but um, they work brilliantly. I'll just show you that. There you are, I've attached my float to it and got a little receptacle there for putting your shot in and I'll just pop it in there and I'll shot my floats like that until I've got just the right amount of bristle showing. Obviously that needs a few more number eights there. <laughs> Even I don't shot a float like that. But by using that, I can use really long floats without needing a really long shotting tube and a bucket because it's a wider surface area than a lot of shotting vases and that that people use. I think I get a much more accurate reading and I will still fine tune a float on the bank. But um, generally I'm really, really accurate with my floats um, just using one of these age old things. I've got one as a spare. I don't know what I'll do if I, if they, cause I don't think they make them anymore, but I've used that system for years and years and years. And it works for me when it comes to shot and the float. Preston Nutriboy that is, but like I say, I don't think you can get them anymore, which is a shame cause they're a, a great little device. I think um, Stompo do one called a Dosa Piombo, I think a much longer device. Um, never needed to use one cause I think that one itself is brilliant. So that's it, that's my river pole float collection. Um, you probably wish you never asked me now because I've certainly gone on a bit, haven't I? So, uh, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, some of it's quite specialized. Some of it's uh, a bit niche and a bit um, a bit quirky just for me. But um, to be honest, to summarize really, that's a shape I would look for. Generally that Aberville plastic tip wire stem is my go-to float. Um, that's all you really need for most river pole fishing situations. The middle float, slightly thicker, and an inline float just for um, bigger bigger baits and bagging up. And then a flat float. That's pretty much all you really need if you are going to do any amount of river fishing. But um, it's nice to sort of tweak tweak that and get something a little bit more specialised for certain situations. So uh, hopefully you found that a bit useful. Um, Hopefully it hasn't blown too many people's minds and uh, I'm sure everyone will um, have their own opinions with floats and you'll certainly disagree with some of my choices um, and be surprised by some of them perhaps. So, um, But that's what fishing is about. As long as you make it work and as long as you're getting bites and putting fish in the net, it doesn't really matter what you're using, um, it's working right for you. So anyway, that's uh, my uh, river pole float prep, a bit of a Bit of a mouthful that wasn't it so um yeah hopefully it's helped you or been of interest and um yeah hopefully i can get out and do a video um using these rigs pretty soon